Well, hello. Welcome to the 12th Spotlight Series with the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. I'm Jan Loida, the Director of Education, and with me tonight we have Richard Becky, who is the Director of Public Relations, and Mr. Bill Lurk, who has been a very big instrumental part of the construction, actually the demolition of the old Ketting Building, and moving toward construction of the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center that will be now in the former Ketting Building. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for being here tonight. Oh, hey, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. What, what else were we going to do? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I've heard from several people, when things start moving with that building, people are going to jump on board and really support this museum at a greater um, pace. So let's tell them about what's happening. I think it's, it's time to talk about what's happening in the building. So we're going to first talk about the outbuildings. You want to talk about that first, Rich? You've got some plans for all of those. Sure. Um, in, in, in this rendition, um, you can see the former Ketting building. You can see the eyebrow entrance to the courtyard that we're, we're planning on installing that will not only visually but also uh, physically connect the uh, main museum uh, with the outbuildings. Now, uh, the outbuildings, this, this is the former that's the former building that uh, um, held the clip joint. Mm -hmm. There's a series of rectangular structures that run behind this building uh, all the way back to the, uh, the pocket lot. Uh, what we're planning on doing, and hopefully the, the, camera, the camera can pick it up in, in this color rendition, what we're planning on doing is um, leaving the uh, glass door in the front there alone, uh, the big window uh, alone. On the courtyard side of things, we're planning on putting oversized um, windows, um, allowing anybody who's in town, um, has the time to stop for a few minutes to see what's going on in the way of uh, cleaning uh, cleaning uh, fossils, uh, uh, doing some touch-up painting uh, on this, that, or the other thing. Uh, it's a general, it's a general uh, workshop. Uh, what I should do, though, is, is take a step backwards and, and, and let the viewing audience know that the information that we're sharing with everybody tonight um, is what we're planning to do as of right now. Some of it is etched in stone, it will not change. Uh, some of it is still up for discussion. Um, uh, some of it may uh, completely be different in its final um, completion con construction stage than, than it is tonight. So this is a little uh, about, tonight is more or less what it is we're, we're thinking and we're planning on doing. Okay. Now, behind the outbuildings, uh, one of the things that we were concerned with uh, was food and drink in the museum. Mm -hmm. You know, as a, as a 501c3 nonprofit, we'll, we'll be able to um, scholarship uh, visiting schools that can't afford normally to come to a facility like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't want kids eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, next to a display of Roman coins. Uh, we don't want people walking around with popcorn and, and, and so we'd rather not have that. So we thought a perfect location, since we're going to have a courtyard, mm -hmm. in a, uh, which will be a meeting area, a patio, uh, we thought why not put our concession stand um, behind where uh, work is being done on fossils and images. Will there be a place for people to sit in that yeah, concession the, the, stand? The, the, yeah, the courtyard. The courtyard uh, in a, in the beginning, the courtyard will have. Um, I guess they're called sails, mm -hmm. um, um, sun blocking triangular pieces of material. Eventually, uh, and we're debating about this. Uh, I'd like to see, on a personal note, uh, a California type pergola. Over every over the courtyard, where we can hang fans, 
yeah. so that air can be moved mm -hmm. and circulated. Uh, in the fall uh, and in the uh, winter time, when, when things are on the cool side, we'll be able to roll out um, the kind of uh, heating things you see in some outdoor restaurants. They're very oh, sure. big on the, on, on, on the left coast. Like the lanterns. The, yeah, the gas yeah, and lanterns. the propane uh -huh. tank that mm -hmm. you know, sure. runs them. And everything, everything will be portable because the, the courtyard uh, is also the main entrance to the side of the building. And that's where the displays come in and out. And, uh, you know, Bill, when we get into the actual floor plans, Bill, Bill will explain, uh, you know, uh, some of that. Mm -hmm. behind, behind the concession stand, we have plenty of space for um, uh, outbuildings where uh, craftspeople uh, can teach how to string jewelry, uh, how to... Um, how to make cornbread over an open fire. I mean, how cool would it be if, if people were dressed in Native American, mm -hmm. you know, garb or colonial garb doing this kind of stuff? Um, again, because we're a nonprofit, um, we'll be able to give kids all the ingredients in a little brown paper bag to make their own corn muffins. And the fella or the lady that's in um, a beaver hunting gear and garb can. Mm -hmm teach them what to do. They can make the, make the, you know, put their ingredients together, then go in the museum and then come back 25 minutes later and their corn muffins will be done. So we're planning on, you know, this is all the living part of the museum where things are free uh, and um, um, people don't have to pay admission um, to go through the museum to do something on the outside. Something that's really exciting we're in the process of, of moving a, 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 a vertical, a French vertical log cabin home from out in the county. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that open for the general public to walk in, uh, to look, you know, to, to see. I've seen it. Uh, some of the logs are maybe, some of the vertical logs are 16, 18 inches wide. Mm -hmm. And we'll have all that exposed so people can, you know, um, get right up. And since it's going to be a, um, you know, a touchy-feely type of museum, uh, they'll be able to, you know, touch the, the stuff that's used as for insulation and, and you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And everything, everything is, uh, uh, you prob Bill probably knows more about what's going to happen with the, with the courtyard and the construction, so um, maybe now's a good time to, you know, mention how we go from the parking lot, uh, or from the street, uh, what's going what, what's going to have to happen, you know, to get the courtyard to look like that. Well, first of all, that right now there's an alley that comes through here between the two buildings, and um, we've been working with Vern Bowman Contracting and also Dunsey Construction. We're going to take out almost uh, three foot of this elevation, and this is going to be street level when we're finished. To the back side of the building, there will be a series of four to five steps that will go up to the original parking lot. But this level out here will be the same level as the interior of the building. And in that process, we're going to remove all the uh, material along both this side of the building and the front of the building and reseal the whole foundation due to uh, water seepage. So all that process is taking time to get it all laid out. and. We're pretty much a goal on that part. Um, permits have been issued for demolition of two of the outbuildings on the back side back here, which were not, they were built like in the 60s, and their foundation have shifted, and we have permission to remove them. That permit is in place. The next permit is in place is to start demolition of the courtyard and start to put it in place. And we want to we basically finish this before we start on the building because this will be the main entrance to the museum. Uh, we won't completely finish the pavers because we want to do that after the building is complete so we don't do any damage to anything. But all this is in, this is in the works. Uh, construction could start as early as next week or it, it might shoot into the uh, first of April. It's just depending on the time the contractors have availability to get down here and start work. So for, as far as that is, the whole inside of the building is completely gutted and ready for construction. But this is 
uh, be the first phase here, putting this uh, courtyard in, which Rich talked about, and uh, securing these other buildings and making sure they're intact once we do all this work. So that's where we're at now. We're just waiting for the contractor to pull, pull the trigger and we're ready to go. So well, I, I think that people don't realize how much has been done already because it's all been done inside the building. Yeah, yes. You've been working with a couple young men to re remove a lot of inside structure. All summer we removed, uh, uh, this building had been remodeled three and four times over a period of time. Uh, upstairs here we removed three different ceilings that were just one just kept getting added to the other and we took we, we exposed all the original woodwork and ceilings inside um, and it just took uh, we probably we probably filled about uh, 10 full-size dumpsters with the debris that we took out of this building that now right now it's completely wide open mm -hmm. so um, and once we start like I said once this gets complete, I think we'll go right into construction this because the plans we have laying here are intact. Uh, uh, they haven't been bid it yet, just uh, just a courtyard, and that's um, Dunsey Construction, Vern Bohm Construction, and I believe um, Arnold Masonary will be doing the, the work, and the stone is being donated by uh, Earthworks out of Prairieville, Missouri. So all the pavers and everything are coming from Prairieville. Uh, or actually the, the stone that's being used is a native stone mm -hmm. that comes out of a quarry here in St. Genevieve. But uh, they're, they're donating the, the pavers for this. And uh, like Rich said, some things might change, but this is pretty much intact where it should stay. And once that gets removed and installed, I think it's gonna really open some eyes because it's gonna look totally different down there once all this takes place. It'll start to really shape up at that time. And oh, it yeah. Look like something is moving in. So that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and totally, totally handicap accessible. Right. I noticed that. I mean, I'm pretty conscious about handicap yeah. accessibility and to keep things all on the same level. Yeah. Um, perfect. Now, be before we, we move um, these three pieces out of the way so that we can go, you know, page by page and, and explain the, our rationale. Uh, at this point in time, um, the two photographs here show the building during the daylight hours mm -hmm. and the evening hours. And we're, we're bringing everything, we're, we're planning on cleaning the exterior, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're planning on doing what needs to be done to bring it back to the way it was. Um, Construction started around 1900. The mm -hmm. Ketting sign says 1910 on it. Mm -hmm. So if we were to go back just to 1910, mm -hmm. um, that's how long some of the, some of that original brick has been there. Uh, the one thing that that doesn't show up in um, in either of these is right now, right smack in the middle of the building is the the Ketting sign, mm -hmm. and we lit it up. Uh, Bill lit it up one night this past summer, mm -hmm. and at 10 o'clock at night, uh, we had a crowd of people oohing and ahhing, and, and then people started reminiscing about when they were children, mm -hmm. and their parents used to take them to the Ketting grocery store. I mean, um, if people have, have been following our, our spotlight shows, they know that this building housed a bunch of different kind of businesses. Uh, but what it's mostly known for is the grocery store sure. that, that the, the Ketting family um, uh, once had. But in the, in the back here, if it wouldn't have been too convoluted, we would have shown the new location of the Ketting sign. And it's, it's being moved from uh, being perpendicular to the front of the building like this, it's gonna get moved around to the back. And that will, where, where the eyebrow um, and the, uh, entranceway from the street well i should mm -hmm. say the entranceway from the street will be designated by the eyebrow mm -hmm. right here right. but coming in from the back uh the focal point is going to be the the lit ketting sign oh that's great and we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna try to keep um we're gonna try to keep as as much uh of the original building mm -hmm. um 
you know, in, in, intact. We're, we're not changing any of the finials. Uh, if anything, what we'll do, we'll get up there and we'll just sand them down real nice like and, and, and paint them up. But before we move these out of the way, I wanted, I wanted to show everybody that in this photograph, that's what the Ketting building is going to look like during the daytime hours. Matter of fact, let's put it right smack in the, in the middle here. Okay, and there are these little gooseneck lamps, and I apologize. They 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 have a they have a proper name, and I don't know what they are, but they they were on the original Ketting building. So what we're planning on doing is bringing them back and putting them in place, oh, okay. and we're planning on uh, touching up um, th this facade up here, and like I said, cleaning up the finials and making everything look nice and pristine. Now, this is what the building's going to look like at night, and I, I kind of think this is really, this is really awesome. Um, we found out that there's a, a ribbon form of lighting with enough high intensity but low voltage and wattage and stuff that after hours, people that are in town, this is what they'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll highlight we'll high you know the, the courtyard sign will be lit. Here's something that in all likelihood will change, mm -hmm. you know the the nomenclature on the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. um, you know uh, we're not technically a local and natural history museum. Uh, we're not technically a science museum. Uh, for the people that are out there who think that we're mothballing the current museum. Uh, history museum for a museum on dinosaurs. Uh, let me go on record as saying for the umpteenth time we're not creating a dinosaur museum. What we're creating is a, um, a museum learning center mm -hmm. and that the learning is going to be based on two uh, disciplines, science and history. Mm -hmm. And you know that because you're the director of education <laughs> and you and I, you and I will be working to, uh, to, you know, to drive that point home. Uh, but the main, the main focus of, of tonight um, is really some of the really awesome things that we're going to end up doing. Um, some, of the, some of the awesome things that we're going to end up doing um, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the museum itself. Now, the Ketting Building can be looked at um, as one large structure or it can be looked at as four quarters of um, items, information and items. Um, and if we look at it in the four quarters, uh, by the time the casual person who, as I say, have a casual interest in this, they'll realize that Oh, okay. So it's not all. It's not going to be all science. It's not going to be all dinosaurs. It's not going to be all history. You know, we're not um, we're not doing anything that we haven't been promoting. You know, we've been promoting a, a learning center. So, Bill, you want to explain the rationale behind the entrance on the side uh, for for the people viewing? This is the courtyard area outside. And where Bill's fingers are, that's the outbuildings. So this is the Ketting Building, and we're going to we're going to talk about the Ketting Building, uh, starting with the main entrance. So basically, the top of the screen is going to be Market, Market Street. Street. Market yes. Street. The bottom of the screen is going to be the back alley. The back alley. Yeah. A, so a, you can gabbery, orientate. Right. A South mm -hmm. Gabbery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can orientate to the picture that's on the screen. Yeah. And. Like Rich said, this is this will be the new entry. Come off at the street, and there'll be entry on the back too. But the door, the main entry, is going to be center of the building. And what will happen here? This entry is large enough to remove and install displays that they'll be changing periodically during the year as the year goes on. As you walk into the first room, this area here in dark is the new. Uh, um, gift shop. Gift, gift shop, shop right. I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. So uh, this gift shop could be open sometimes and the museum might be closed so you could go in the gift shop almost any time uh, during the week and not go into the museum but if you know if you, if you do wish to you can go through these doors here. 
all this huge area here, this is the old, this would be the left side, the right side of the building if you're standing out on Market Street. This is the originally old Ketting store. And then the new additions on the other side, and both of these two large areas are going to be hopefully filled with displays, which Rich will explain later. In this area here, there will be uh, two restrooms, and in the concession, not the concession stand, but the gift shop, there'll be another restroom. And through the back entrance here, there will be a entrance for a handicap, and we will probably have to cut two holes in the wall. And what you will do will be, be able to come in here, get to a platform, and then there will be a, a, a small lift platform that your wheelchair will go on, and that will drop you down to the level floor, and then you can make your way through the museum that way. Also, there's an elevator in the back of the building here, the existing elevator. That will take you up to the second floor, which we will get to later. Um, basically, the whole museum itself, this floor, will be basically open up to where you can remove, get through the whole area almost without any hesitation. Right now, there's walls that block your, your entry, but most of those will be either open up or cut out to make it accessible. So everything's being accessible from the main floor. But for visitors, their area is mainly in this area here, for the first floor. And there will be a full basement, but 90% of that would just be for storage. And we're in the process of, like I said before, once we get into this area here, we're going to tear out alongside the foundation and reseal it with a, a sealer so the basement stays uh, dry and free of any kind of moisture. Right now, of course, these buildings are old. They were made back in the 1900s. They're mortar. I don't care where you go in St. James, and in some of the older homes, even the businesses, you're going to find moisture in the basement, and we're going to correct that as much as we can. But that's basically the main floor there so far. We, um, we, we discovered uh, through research and, and people and, and talking with people, um, uh, Walt Disney was spot on when he makes you walk through a gift shop to get to an amusement ride, mm -hmm. and then when you leave, guess what? You get to walk through that gift shop again. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we're 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 stealing that that concept. Um, as Bill said, you, you you don't have to pay admission if you're not already a member. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay admission. Um, to go to come through the front doors. If you're just going to shop, you can shop. We do have a, a restroom in the back there mm -hmm. in case uh, you're out and about and need to use a facility. You don't have to pay admission to use one of the, the uh, facilities that are on the first floor or the second floor. Uh, there's one back here. Um, and you'll, um, you'll pay your admission somewhere in the gift store and come through. And as Bill already mentioned, um, some of the walls in and around where the uh, doorways are, are will be expandable because some of the, uh, some of the items that, that come in and out are going to be extremely tall, extremely wide, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll, we'll need that flexibility. Uh, there's a reason why we're keeping the set of stairs in the front of the building, and that has to do when we talk about um, the, the second floor. Um, we have two basic teases, uh, visual teases for people. Outside, we will eventually have a huge, oversized, uh, all-season um, color TV. And we'll be able to create our own um, in-house uh, form of advertising. You know, when you come in the museum, this is what you're going to see. It will play in a loop. We're also going to show on the outside of the building at times some silent movies mm -hmm. and the reason we're doing that is this area right here this area right here at one time uh, was a silent movie theater in the facility and as a matter of fact if you were to stand um, around 10 o'clock between 10 and 12 on the sidewalk and look in uh, you'll still see the hand-painted green filigree pattern that represented the screen. And the screen was a concrete wall, painted white. So this area right here uh, will be part of an area for 
um, our staff to, to put their, their, their belonging and stuff to keep them secure. It's not a lunch room or anything. It's, it's just a, a little staff area to start the day. The actual conference room, you know, we'll discuss when we get up on the second floor. But I mentioned two teasers. One is the TV. Uh, and if that's not enough, then the second one, this circle right here, uh, represents an aquarium. And we, we've, we're in possession of an aquarium that I believe is close to four feet in diameter and um, extremely tall. Um, that will be seen from the time you walk in the front door. That's what you'll see. And we'll, we'll, probably, we'll, prop, we'll light it internally mm -hmm. so we get, you get that kind of bluish, whitish look like you see in, in, a, in big aquariums like mm -hmm. in Boston and you know Baltimore and stuff like that. Well, we're going to do the same thing. That will be a fresh fish aquarium and what we're thinking about doing, again, this is one of those things that could change, okay. but what we're planning on right now is to stock that with fish that are native to St. Genevieve and St. Genevieve County. So now, out of the creeks, out of the rivers? Out, out of the of creeks, out of the rivers, okay. yeah. Um, uh, please don't ask me what kind of fish uh, coming from Boston. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably has some named Gar in there. Yeah. Right out of the river. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's, that's what we'll have there. Now, in this, in this layout, we're kind of leaning on displays. Uh, we're going to have as many displays on... Uh, casters on, on rollers that we possibly can because uh, sometimes just moving a few displays around uh, gives that area a completely different look. Sure. And none of us seem to be want to be tied down with a timeline. You know, we don't, I, I, I would hate to put any of our docents on the spot when someone comes in and says, well, how do you know that actually is 5,000 years old? You know, because mm -hmm. the date says it's like, so we're going to try to avoid that by um, having a random display. Uh, from my research, uh, and trust me, I don't know a lot about museums, but when you don't know a lot about something, you tend to do a lot of research. And my research is, is telling me that you can do a linear uh, f traffic flow mm -hmm. where you start at a certain point in time and you work your way either forward or backward, but then eventually you're going to crisscross, and voila, you've covered the spectrum of um, the world as we know it. Mm -hmm. uh, that leaves you, in my opinion, up to an awful lot of interpretation and, and possible arguments and, and, and discussions. I would uh, take the cowardly approach and go with the random, <laughs> the random thing. So maybe in here we have uh, cultures of the world, and even though they didn't exist at the same time, uh, we have a Mayan display, we have a Viking display, we have a Roman display, and the displays are related. Mm -hmm. There's jewelry from these other cultures. Mm -hmm. There's uh, uh, coins from these other cultures. There's armament from the, these other cultures. Uh, maybe we just say, you know what? Uh, this is the month of, uh, you know, we missed the golden opportunity. Uh, the Chinese New Year, I believe, was in uh, February. Mm -hmm. uh, we could clear that display next February and have nothing but uh, Chinese items. And, and that would be the draw. You know, come to the, the learning center uh, because what we're doing is we're, uh, for the next 30 days, we're just showing you everything from how fireworks are made uh, to some ancient, um, some ancient uh, weaponry along with vases and, and all that stuff. So basically what we're looking at is, uh, what I think we're looking at are, are the multiple cultures of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, as big as this building is compared to what we currently have mm -hmm. across the way, um, we've got We've outgrown it already. We've I know. I was thinking about all that's come to the museum. Yeah. Uh, knowing that this is going to be a place where people can view a lot of different cultures. Yeah. And that and, is such a good right. thing. Right. And the fact that we can change the displays, and it's not the same thing every time you come to the museum no. learning no. center. It that's will be different. It will be, 
maybe seasonal, but it yeah. may be um, just the, something that is an anniversary of some yeah, culture that we op- want to. The option, the option to do things is, uh, is, 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 is amazing. The potential, the potential is, is amazing. Mm-hmm. What we can put on display, what we can move around, what we can take away, um, it's, almost, it's almost like we're going to be our own chameleon. This learning center uh, can have uh, internally a, a different look every three, every four, every six months. Now, over here on this side, mm-hmm. this is going to be, this is the hook. I mean, th- and, and this is the reason for the, for the misunderstanding still in the community. This is where Guy Darrow's Lost World Studio dinosaurs mm-hmm. are going to be shown. And we're talking about a a gentleman who, first and foremost, is an artisan. Uh, We're talking about a gentleman that um, creates images um, that are uh, Hollywood, Jurassic Park movie-like worthy. Maybe even better. They're they're more realistic. Um, and um, this is, I mean, Guy, I'm not, I'm not going to give away any secrets, uh, but Guy already has a plan on how some of these things are, are going to be displayed. And to, to be quite honest, um, the dinosaurs, are the, the, that's the draw. I mean, everybody likes dinosaurs, but, uh, you know, maybe we're, you know, victims of our own enthusiasm because there's still a perception in the community that we're closing the historical museum for a dinosaur display. And the dinosaurs are only going to exist at this point in time in 25% of the building mm-hmm. in, in, this, in this area right here. Okay. Um, now, we get bigger, we expand, mm-hmm. we buy buildings to the right and left of us, we, we raise the roof, we go out back, uh, then the inside uh, gets altered somewhat. And maybe the entire first floor down the road is all dinosaurs. And we're not just talking about the, the full-size uh, three-dimensional dinosaur. We're talking about bones and, um, um, well, you name it, you know. Um, I think he's even got to display a dinosaur dung, you know, pet- <laughs> petrified. But still, I mean, well, that's m- exciting. It, it really is, <laughs> really. And this is going to be a hands-on facility, so mm-hmm. kids are going to be able to go home and so tell mom it's and dad. Right? Yeah, it's, pe- it's, it's petrified, right? Yeah, it's petrified. It's uh, petrified. We do have we do have um, uh, ways to get out of the building uh, in case there's an emergency. Okay. Uh, there are other doors uh, around the perimeter of the building, uh, both handicap accessible and um, uh, I guess three O. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, standard uh, with uh, uh, exteriors, um, and they're, they're scattered throughout the building. Um, but that's, uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, what the first floor is like. It's, it's, it, it'll be primarily the, the gift shop, um, the display area of cultures, the aquarium, the display area of uh, the Jurassic and Triassic and all the other ASIC uh, time frames um, uh, with the dinosaurs, uh, the staff room, a way to get in and out. We're, we're hoping that, um, you know, once we get, you know, you, you have to crawl before you walk, you have to walk before you run. Well, when mm-hmm. we get into beyond the crawling stage, we'd like to have functions. Mm-hmm. You know, how cool would it be to have a wine and cheese social and you're standing next to a 40-foot dinosaur? I mean, come on now. That's going to happen in St. Genevieve? <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> it's going to happen right here. So anyway, that's the, that's the first floor. Uh, there's, as Bill already mentioned, there's an elevator to take you to the second floor. Uh, there's always uh, there's, um, a, a set of steps uh, to go up to the second floor. Um, and the second floor um, looks uh, very much like, like what we have uh, right here. And do you want to... Explain anything about even even you know where the heating ducts and stuff are, and you know what that cluster in the middle is. And well, basically, um, upstairs there will be a theater, which is shown right here, and then this is a, a a lunch room for the employees. These are your three restrooms with a janitor closet. This is on the at the top of the steps. There will be a 
uh, receptionist to direct you to other parts of the museum. Over here is a computer uh, terminal where there will be three computer bays where you can sit and research all kinds of things. And this will be general display, this area here. And this back room here will be the St. Genevieve room, which will house most of the artifacts and stuff from St. Genevieve. Um, back here is a, uh, there's two offices for the main operator and then the secondary person that will be helping out. And here's your elevator that brings you up there if you need to. That's basically the front of either the main or the second floor. Yeah, we're, 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 we're maximizing, we're maximizing as much space as we can. The concept behind being a learning center came about when we first floated the idea in the community about doing something with the uh, original uh, museum. And uh, when we kept talking about uh, options, um, trying to enlarge the current museum, mm -hmm. uh, trying to buy a building in town and having, hey, the Smithsonian has multiple buildings, you know, why can't St. Genevieve? Uh, we just kept hitting roadblocks in that. People just shook their heads saying, a, a museum, museum. Mm -hmm. And, a, you know, museums in little towns sometimes aren't all that successful, especially if, it's, if you're in an area that it's difficult to get to. Um, compound that with if your museum doesn't have a budget, like we don't have over there, then you're relying on foot traffic to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, there's, there's two strikes uh, against you. So we decided, um, no, we can't go the museum route. Uh, let's, let's try to ha create a learning center. Mm -hmm. Once we use the word learning center, people started to say, you're onto something. You know, how are you going to make this different? You know, how is your museum learning center uh, going to be different than your uh, average, your average either history or science museum? Well, right from the get-go, we're not one or the other. Mm -hmm. We're not an oversized history museum. We're not a science museum that has a few, you know, St. Genevieve historical items. We are a museum learning center that specializes, as I already mentioned, in two disciplines, history and science. And as Bill mentioned, we have an amphitheater here that will help with the learning thread. Um, this information center right, right there. You'll be able to come up to the information center, ask the person who's working the information center um, about anything in the museum, and that person will ask if you want to do your own research mm -hmm. or if you would like the desk to do the research. Mm -hmm. If you want the desk to do the research, you can go, ba you can go back throughout the museum and, and explore. And when you're done, there'll be a packet of information waiting for you. If you want to do your own research, you know, let the, you know, mm -hmm. let the, uh, let the desk do the research for you. If you want to do your own research, um, those, those three computers will have printers dedicated to them and all of our computers are going to be electronically aligned with the public school, the public school system, the uh, parochial school system, and the library that's out on 32. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be able to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's, that's going to happen is no, no, no one of these entities w wants to reinvent the wheel. So if you need to do research on genealogy. Well, if you go to the community center, they have two mm -hmm. of the top five programs on genealogy. So why can't we just invest in the other three and let the computers talk back and forth? And that's, that's, what, that's what we're planning to do. When you, when you see an exhibit, and you read the placket that next to that next to that exhibit, whether it's a three by five card or a f five by seven or an eight by ten, whatever. It's impossible to put everything about that item on the placket. Sure. Okay, so we're not making people learn. 
we're, we're going to give people the option to learn more. And eventually, this is the really cool thing, eventually we'll be able to add a little barcode to each of the display pla mm -hmm. uh, placards. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, our docents and the management team, whoever happens to be there, maybe visiting, will have an app that allows you on your cell phone to load the app and photograph the barcode. That information gets sent to the information desk. You'll get a response. Do you want your own computer or would you like us to? And then all that information, that extra information on that item is yours mm -hmm. if you want it. Will it come to your phone or will it be something you pick up in a packet? No, it'll, what, what'll happen is you'll, you'll, get a, a, you'll get an electronic ping saying your information is ready upstairs. Okay. So this must, this must be done already at other museums, yeah. right? You've already seen this program in place, and so yeah. you know that it's out there waiting for us to be able to bring it into yeah, the exactly. center. So some of our viewers yeah. may have already seen something, something similar, similar to that. Something similar. Yeah, it's, it's out there. It's not, right. I, you know, I'd, like, I, I'd like to take credit for the idea, but right. I, you know, I can't. It's something that's already out there, much like, much like the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. um, when I was living back, back in, in, in New England, um, I, I used to take my, my summer baseball, my Legion summer baseball coaches to say thank you to them because when, when you coach Legion in, in the East Coast, you don't get paid. You don't get a stipend or anything. You do it gratis. Um, and I used to say thank you. I used to take my coaches every summer to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, upstate mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. And one of the nicest things that they ever did is they converted a couple of closets into a little amphitheater and every 20 minutes actually two 20 minute periods in in an hour mm -hmm. they would play for anyone to watch abbott and costello's who's on first routine and the at amphitheater was full of people and all they did is they sat there for 20 minutes and they laughed and then they left and then <laughs> 40 minutes later, it played again. Well, we're going to kind of take that idea, mm -hmm. but we, we, would like to have, we would like to have things happening all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, to pay homage to the fact that there was uh, a silent movie theater in this facility at one mm -hmm. time, people, when they enter the amphitheater to get ready to watch a pre-programmed mm -hmm. show, right they're going to be watching silent movies. They're not mm -hmm. going to come into a, a blank screen. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some form of entertainment on there. The, mm -hmm. same, the same form of entertainment that um, is playing outside, mm -hmm. on, on the out, outside TV. Mm -hmm. And then whatever show is happening, we're, we're going to get, we're going to do the legal, you know, we're a nonprofit, um, uh, and there's always that little in the tiny print, you can't, you know, you can't rebroadcast something if you're charging. Uh, and technically, when you pay admission, you're charging to get in. So we're going to work out. We're going to work out the uh, the dynamics that, that allows us to uh, show a, a History Channel uh, mm -hmm. program, to uh, the Science uh, uh, program. Um, a, a teacher at, at one of the schools can bring their class over, and something something that's related to what they're doing will show there. These are stadium seats, which means they come up, uh, let's see the camera's this way, so they come up and go this way and step up and go this way and step up and go this way. So those are stationary and mm -hmm. they're elevated. Okay. Uh, in the front there'll be a row of chairs that are chairs mm -hmm. and they can be moved out of the way for, for, wheel, you know, for wheelchairs to, to, to move in. Um, big podium here for our lecture series mm -hmm. and for teachers that want to you know, use the, the, um, the amphitheater and lecture space for a classroom. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, big screen, uh, you know, big screen, drop down screen, permanent TV. Um, and everything is the, 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 the heartbeat of the learning center is that's the control area. That's the information desk. Okay. The person that's there will have a bank of computers. 
Um, the computers will have the eye in the sky casino watching. Okay. And there'll be little tiny images of That's every different. camera. Mm -hmm. So that what one person can monitor the security of the building mm -hmm. and hit a button to send the next show over to the screen that's in the amphitheater. Okay, so we had talked about early on in the museum um, development that we were gonna be having the St. Genevieve Room or the current museum in, in information. We're gonna also do some things around Mississippi Lime and the, the history of mining, yeah. maybe the history of agriculture. Those are some of the core industries in this community. So. Are there rooms designated on the second floor for that? Yeah, and, and the thing is, it, it's almost impossible. You know, the two disciplines are history and, and science, and you'd like to have them mesh a little better, mm -hmm. but the reality of it, because we have so much, and I mean, this is, uh, it, it's terrible, and I'm going to say so little space to put it in because mm -hmm. the Ketting building is so big. Uh, it appears that the bulk of the science stuff, mm -hmm. it will be on the first floor, mm -hmm. and the bulk of the historic St. Genevieve stuff will be on the second floor. That will change mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. because there are some historical items uh, that are also scientific items. So, I mean, some artifacts and images can actually wear both hats. But up, up here on the second floor, in, in, the, in the big space that would be directly above the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. um, that, that's where the mining and agriculture. And we're also hoping that in addition to three-dimensional uh, uh, mining, agriculture, and the three-dimensional stuff that represents St. Genevieve County, we're hoping that we can get our hands on DVDs, and videos mm -hmm. that th the agricultural groups already have, mm -hmm. because with their permission, we can you know we can convert them to a thumb drive, and that thumb drive can be utilized to show, you know, something about agriculture or mm -hmm. mining or St. Genevieve County. Um, Rest assured, the Rebecca family will not be having the St. Genevieve room, uh, you know, to display their heritage. Uh, I'm not from around here, but if, if we were, um, one of the first things I would do is I would ask the uh, the museum, oh, what, what kind of what kind of financial assistance uh, will you help me to bring my family's message mm -hmm. to the community for the next three months? And you know, like like you know, we said you know, mm -hmm. um, um, Bill had mentioned that you know, right now we're earmarking this rectangular space for um, the St. Genevieve room that uh, will pay homage to all that is St. Gen mm -hmm. uh, on a rotating basis. Uh, we may come up at the last minute and say, you know what, we got far more stuff uh, in the way of medias and you know, uh, prehistoric rock and stuff, let's make that the uh, geology area for mm -hmm. the next six months and move over here in the front of the building, the St. Genevieve room. You know, one thing without walls. Right, so even the upstairs, the second uh, floor is gonna be without walls. These displays will be moved around. We're yeah. gonna develop displays that, you know, represent these different things that we had said that we were going to represent for St. Genevieve. Oh, community. yeah, yeah, so we they're can't. Just, they're not locked into, this is the room. That no, room. no. It's going to be a moving, active yeah. display. Yeah, and it's okay. going to, and I told somebody at, at, at one presentation, I told somebody, this is, this is going to be a, a five cents learning center. Mm -hmm. And somebody said to me, she says, well, isn't taste one of the, five senses and I said yes it is and she said how in the world are you going to be able to do that I said when a class of third graders make their corn muffins mm -hmm. from scratch that they've cooked over an open fire they're going to be eating that mm -hmm. that is taste mm -hmm. I said picking up a fossil uh, I don't know we'd have to ask Guy if if you can lick it but there's a good chance that maybe you'll taste salt. You know, who knows? I don't want to get in trouble. I shouldn't have said that. I may get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fossil they get to take home with them, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and some, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to have on display is just, just, just mind-boggling. 
Right, some of that old stuff, I'm sure, has a scent to it, too. Some of the old, yeah. you know, metals that y people used for weaponry or yeah. even from jewelry. I mean, I've seen some of that, and I know that y you can almost smell different metals yeah. coming from um, some of those exhibits. But yeah, and we, we just accepted a collection of items, and some of it is jewelry. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the really, really, I mean, wicked, expensive and stuff, That'll go under glass, mm -hmm. you know. People will be able to see a, a display right, of right. it. But we've got so much. I mean, how cool would it is it going to be when you can hold maybe a coin that Julius Caesar held, because we've got coins from his reign. Mm -hmm. You know, how cool would it be to to slip on uh, a ring that the time frame of that was when the Roman, Roman Senate was at its highest. Hmm. I mean, I'm not saying Julius Caesar actually, you know, held that coin. I mean, if he did, I probably would have stole it by now. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's from that era. And but it's from that, that era. it's from that era. Yeah. So yeah. still, that's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's the second floor. And that, I believe, is what the majority of, of, of people would be interested in, in what our initial plans are. Um, these, these other, these other um, uh, designs and drawings. Um, just, you, just electric and heating. Electric and heating. And, you know, and the thing is, we're, we're, we're not doing anything, we're not doing anything that um, if you were going to build your own home, um, you wouldn't do. I mean, the bathrooms on, on the second floor or above the bathrooms on the first floor. Mm -hmm. That way, the same the same pipes can be used. Mm -hmm. You know, the electric runs uh, are going to be as, as 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 straight as possible. Um, the elevations and stuff, um, we're, we're we're keeping as much as the original. Uh, I don't know, Bill. You would know better than this. Uh, have we identified the kind of brick and if we need to replace it with something similar or? I think Bernie Bowman has uh, several extra brick that have matched that we've looked in at already, so we should be good there. So it's, I mean, it's 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 it, it's going to be a, a you know, a, a pretty, pretty um, um, amazing facility. Um, as much window, uh, as many windows as we can use, uh, we'll utilize uh, on the roof where. Um, uh, we're keeping a couple of skylights, okay. so in the, which which really um, makes sense because above where the agriculture area is originally being earmarked for, mm -hmm. there'll be some natural light coming in from above it, you know, and you know we we'll have uh, so you maybe know, we can grow a little bit of the corn or the soybeans in the area. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the process of growing beans in my sunroom right now. Okay, I mean, I mean, it's pretty how, much fun. And, and you know what, uh, I, I can, um, I, I taught um, one of the many things that I, summer schools I taught, I, I taught a, 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 an elementary, um, elementary summer program and when my daughter was in second grade and we did the little Dixie cup mm -hmm. with the potting soil and the one seed and we put them all in the window, and by the end of the program, whatever that seed was was already sprouting. I mean, why, why, why couldn't we have? I can share with you pictures of the seeds that I gave my grandson at Valentine's Day, and they're already 15 inches tall. Yeah. And just to have a four-year-old watch the sprouting occur, we put the, the seeds into a dark area and we mm -hmm. wait for a week for them to sprout and then we put them in those seed kits yeah and and every and every day i get two pictures morning and evening of the growth of this plant and so it is fascinating for these kids these kids that go to the grocery store don't understand all of those steps of actually how our food is produced so i mean i'm excited about that to like bring those children in to see the development of their food from a seed to a plant, to the harvest, and then back, yep. it becoming the seed again for the next planting. So, and that 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 is the major thread mm -hmm. that weaves its way completely through this project. Right. Uh, we are a museum 
learning center. Mm -hmm. And that's where the learning comes in. Yeah. We have a lot to offer. Oh, yeah, we do. We are excited we about construction moving forward. I know Bill's very excited. He's done the hard work of cleaning it up, and I know he's anxious to start to see things happen and shape up and become a reality of what your plan is. So none of us can see it happen soon enough, right, Bill? I agree. Yeah. yeah. So we're all yeah. getting we're, anxious we're getting out. Ang yeah. We are anxious, and we are being very patient with those who need to make sure that the structure is ready to move forward on. But um, I'm asking the community to please be patient with us, right? Yeah. It, and, it's and, gonna and, come. And the bottom, the bottom line is, um, and I, I, still, I still believe this, I, I really do. If, if we do this, if, 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 we stick, if we stick to our initial philosophy, mm -hmm. we're going to have something that will rival anything between St. Louis and Memphis. Right. And, and it's not that we're gonna be the biggest learning center. It's not gonna be that because we're the newest learning center. Uh, it's going to be that we are a learning center. Right. We're, and this is, the, this is the teacher in me that's, that's coming out. This is, this is the concept. I think we also need to remember that this whole area is interested in history and into museums. We've got things going south of us in Perryville. They're working hard to create a Vietnam War mm -hmm. memorial. And so there are more than one attractions coming into this area with St. Genevieve moving toward a national park system title yeah. that will bring people to our town. The fact that we are the largest area in the United States that houses vertical log buildings to show the French culture, we don't realize the gold mine that we sit on with just the history that is already here. So I think when we have something like this learning center to add to what's already been here for years, I think we'll see more people come than we. Oh yeah, I, I, and yeah. I would I would even like to 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 go one step beyond that and say, hey, let's not necessarily make Saint Genevieve the destination or Perryville the destination. Let's make us the destination. Let's let's get together. Mm -hmm. um, three weeks ago, uh, my wife had an assignment in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. While she was working. I did the uh, part of the Bourbon Trail. I did part of the Bourbon Trail. Um, every bourbon distillery I went to and visited, they made sure that you knew only 20 minutes down the road. It was their competitors, mm -hmm. but they wanted you to visit them and they, they would let you know an hour down the road was enough. So, they really weren't in competition with it, but what they were doing is they were keeping people from going north to Louisville. Mm -hmm. They were keeping people going from going north to Cincinnati. They were keeping people in Kentucky. Right, by, exactly. And that's what that's what we could do too. Right, we could and there's keep plenty to here. do in Kentucky. And there's plenty to do in Missouri. We yeah. found that to be true with our winery tour. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have to see ourselves as not competing against each other, but competing with Herman Winery. Or competing right. with Those are, our, that's the competition. Exactly. So we are excited about that. We are down to about one minute where uh -huh. we are going to be cut from the show. So I, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Bill, especially for all the work that you are doing. Um, it, nobody knows what goes on behind the scene, but those people, we, can, may not, we cannot make this happen without those who are working so hard day in and day out to... Uh, get the building ready. So thank you and your crew for all that you've done. Um, Rich, thank you continuously for being the voice of the Museum Learning Center and for writing about the treasures that we have to display within the museum and just what's next on our calendar and to keep people informed. So you guys are working almost full time behind the scenes to keep this voice alive and moving forward. So with that, I'm gonna say good night and come see us again for the next Spotlight series on yeah. the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. Good night. Good night.